Yo, what's good Spirit Squad? Today we're going to be playing a bit of Commander, and that's going to be one of the first times Commander's ever been highlighted on this channel because, well, honestly, I'm pretty unfamiliar with it. I don't really play Commander too often, like once or twice a year, and I have a lot of friends who play Commander very casually, but that is not what this is today. Today, we're looking at the Mana Traders event, which for the month is going to be 1v1 Commander, which means that you want to play your CEDH piles. You want to play the most powerful shit you can possibly be doing while still adhering to all the rules of Commander. So you're still going to have the same ban list that's available for Commander decks, and that's going to have things like Primeval Titan, um, all of the power cards, minus Time Twister, you can still play that one just fine. And there's going to be like no Caracas, for example. There's a lot of other really good EDH specific things that you're not able to play. And because I had to look up that ban list, I will also assume that there's other people here who don't know the ban list. So I'm actually going to put a link right to the commander ban list in the video description so y'all can check that out and see what's not allowed in this format. What is allowed in this format is some really high powered shit. You can play things like Tainted Pact plus uh, Thassa's Oracle, you can play things like Demonic Consultation, you're allowed to play things like Ken Rift the Return King, the First Sliver, you can play Yuriko the Tiger Shadow as a commander, and there's a lot of really sweet stuff to be doing. Here, we're going to be playing Winota, Joiner of Forces, and she is going to be a bit of an aggro deck that also has a lot of control -y stacks elements to it. What I mean by that is that, of course, you have Winota herself, and she can put a lot of power and toughness on the table very quickly. And she does great at being aggressive in that manner. You can cast a bunch of zero drops like Rograk, Phyrexian Walker, and even Ornithopter that can go ahead and attack while still costing zero. And it's not important that they, you know, don't actually attack for damage. What is important is that they are non-human creatures that can still attack with Winota just fine. Also, you have a lot of very controlly elements here. You have things to protect your own creatures like Mother of Runes and Giver of Runes, so you can do like the mom-stepmom combo. You also have one copy of Alciate of Life's Bounty. Also, I don't know why I said one copy because we're playing Commander. Everything's one copy, so feel free to make fun of me in the comments for that one. We also have a lot of very specific hate pieces that make your opponent's life very hard when they're trying to cast spells. We have things like Thalia, Guardian of Thraben, because would this be a Dre video without Thalia? We also have things like Spirit of the Labyrinth, had to sneak a spirit in there, Thorn of Amethyst, and cards like Sanctum Prelate, which have seen very occasional play in decks like humans. We also have a couple of cool infinite combos here. We have access to Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker, which can combo out with cards like Village Bell Ringer or Zealous Conscripts to make infinite copies of whatever you really want. You also have things like Thalia's Lancers to go look for it, as well as Mog Catcher, wherever that is. Here it is. So Mog Catcher is just three taps, search for a goblin, put it on a table and shuffle, and that is almost entirely the combo with Kiki Jiki. Mog Catcher can also get probably the most broken card in this format, Dockside Extortionist. Now, this thing for one in a red is a one two that makes X treasures where X is the number of artifacts plus enchantments your opponent's control. This thing gets really out of hand with the mana very quickly. But that's really going to be the deck. You have a lot of super cool things in here to play offense. We already went over that. To play defense, we have cards like the Draneth Magistrate, which stops your opponent entirely from playing their commander or really anything out of their graveyard, off the top of their deck exile anywhere if it's not their hand sucks to be them we have gideon of the trials which i haven't seen a lot of lists with but i honestly think that's wrong gideon a trial specifically is here to use the emblem the zero drop emblem says as long as i have a gideon on a table they can't win the game and i can't lose the game that's going to be really important against anything playing copies of Thassa's oracle again with copies one copy a copy Thassa's oracle singular but you can also play Laboratory Maniac, so I guess one and a half, whatever, either way, fucked up. Um, so we have things like that, uh, Vryn Wingmare, we have Thalia, we have Thorn of Amethyst, there's a Glow Rider in here somewhere, there it is. So it's really easy to like stack these effects up too, and make it so that your opponent's non-creature spells can cast three, four, five extra mana, and nobody wants to deal with that nonsense. Rule of Law, 
um, Eidolon Rhetoric, and we have an Archon somewhere. Here it is, Archon of Ameria. Make it so that each of your opponents... Oh, uh, Deafening Silence, too. Make it so that your opponents are going to have a very hard time trying to combo out with a bunch of non-creature spells, too. So if you land any of those, then your opponent's just going to be pretty miserable trying to do their own thing while somehow preventing us from doing our thing, and our thing is very easy. Resolve Minota. Job done. <laughs> and that's really what it is most of the time. We also have a lot of very fast mana to make this happen pretty quickly, right? Like we have a Simeon Spirit Guide. We've got a couple of zero mana rocks here. We've got a Mox Diamond, a Chrome Mox, a Jeweled Lotus to power out Winota very quickly, a Lotus Petal. But we've also got some stuff over here too. Like we've got a Soul Ring. We've got a Mana Vault. At the two mana spot, we've got each of Iron and Gold Mirrors. Um, just lots of really easy mana ways to power things out. And there's a couple of tech cards too. So we have things like Goblin Crater Maker and a Braid to get rid of specific artifacts that are giving you problems or specific creatures that might be giving you problems. There's going to be a Red Elemental Blast that almost entirely has Stasis Oracle's name all over it. But realistically, you can do that to help other blue cards too, which just that's very easily your best target. And a cool card that I forgot was a thing in this format, Sarah Ascendant. If you have 30 or more life, this thing is a 6-6 six, six flying lifelinker. But with Commander, you always start at 40. So this thing is just always on. So if you just play a Sarah Ascendant turn one, it's just huge from the get go. And I, uh, I really enjoy that. So I'm very happy to play this. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. We've got some cool lands. I should not be playing this. Spectator seating enters the battlefield tapped unless I have more than one opponent. And I will not have more than one opponent in a one versus one environment. So uh, don't be Dre. Don't make that mistake. I'm going to swap that out for us something. And as you can tell from the tone of my voice here, I'm actually recording this part of the video after having played my matches. And uh, suffice it to say, it came up because I totally drew a spectator seating in one of the games. <laughs> <laughs> playing one versus one and uh i needed the mana so we're gonna sub that out now and the land i'm gonna put in instead is going to be rugged prairie the filter land so that is going to be i don't have any of those there we go so now we can put a Rugged Prairie in, and that'll be a lot better because that always comes into play untapped, and we really just cannot afford extra tapped lands, right? Like, that is a pretty egregious mistake. But that aside, that's going to be our list. I will see y'all in round one. Right, here we go. We got our opponent. We are going to very much keep our hand. This hand is great. Um, who's on the play? They are on the play. Oh, this is the same person. So we actually recorded a game previously with our, well, opponent. They were on Gitrog Monster and they still are, but we got a turn one Magus of the Moon and they just kind of auto scooped to it. So I don't really want to count that as a game, right? So here I can do a couple of things. I can just cast turn one Winota, but nothing has haste. So that doesn't really be too much good. I can also cast Jewel Lotus, Lotus Petal, turn one Thalia. And I actually think I like that a little better. Or I can Ancient Tomb, Jewel Lotus, Lotus Petal, and then Archon of Ameria. That actually seems a little better. Let's do that instead. So I want to cast all of these things first so that I don't accidentally like break the Archon of Ameria clause. It'll be pretty good times to make sure that our opponent is not able to do too much with any um any of their cool lands because they're all going to come into play tapped so if they're going to have lands come into play tapped and i can just untap and immediately jam a winota down their throat then this feels pretty good although our opponent did get to open up with a basic which is pretty sweet not gonna lie um all right so this can be very cool with yeah so this thing's gonna have reach and that is annoying um upside they don't actually get to interact with the winota part of this which is kind of the entire goal right so let's jam this red jam you for white we are going to okay so we are going to basically sacrifice our friend archon for the sake of getting a sweet human out um but i actually think that might be worth so let's do that and see what we have access to oh my god we have access to nothing all right well that's gonna suck um 
<laughs> all right so they get to go ahead and block and discard and nope they're not doing any of them so they're just going to go ahead and get to dredge which is going to be pretty good for them the upside to what we're doing here though is that you know they're not actually going to be able to cast too many things because of the archon's text uh what do we got nylea's intervention search for up to x cards shuffle or lands or twice x with breathing with flying that gets lands ghost form talisman of black green and beast with dig up search for a basic land you got it so that's gonna be the only spell they can cast and they've already played a land so that's basically the end of their turn but this is still got plenty of potential for being so let's see what we can come up with that actually is pretty i want to i think i want to attack first i do not want to attack with winota then i can just play mom instead of glow rider i believe now let's try to hit this time let's not miss on winota so we already knew about the stink we didn't discard that was already a thing that we knew was on the table so that's kind of whatever oh hi loyal apprentice is good but i would much rather have them um if i get magus then they have two basics i have zero basics and i'm kind of sol as far as casting cards so i'm actually gonna get the loyal apprentice um for the sake of not like bodying and here i'm actually okay with them blocking the archon um because of the fact that i'm still just going to get to play land and then like immediately follow up with mom and thalia so that's still pretty sick so i can play my land here and I've got four mana total. So do I want to glow rider in mom instead? That's probably a little better as far as you. And having access to Thalia versus glow rider is mostly irrelevant. So I think I'd rather cast a glow rider and get the most out of my. So I expect them to dredge up. They do. We have nature's actually, I'm just going to pop out there. Uh, nature's claim, cabal initiate. This is cabaretty courtyard oh, oh oh it's the naya panorama in that game dark blast and a basic swamp so they played their basic swamp their hand is pretty irrelevant which is nice for us now let's do the untap recruit of the guard that's really good we are going to start off with i guess just an attack like i don't really need to press too many buttons um recruiter of the guard can grab i'm not gonna worry about that First, let's attack and see what we actually can spin off of our Thopter. And thanks to mom being on the table, I don't mind clicking the attack all button. Attack you. Oh, you have haste, which was cool, but you're a human, so I didn't actually care. Um, So we're going to do that. We're only going to get one spin off of this, but I still don't mind having mom give again. Boo. I guess that makes sense. I'll leave my hand, right? Um, <laughs> All right. What do we? Oh, we're just going to move to blocks. Got it. And we're not blocking any. Okay. So with my four mana, what I'm going to do is this is pretty painful, not going to lie. Um, But I'm going to go ahead and cast Thalia. And I am just going to cast Doxide Extortionist for no actual benefit. I'm just going to have a non-human on the table to attack. So if they want to cast non-creature spells, they're going to cost two more, which is pretty sweet as far as stacks effects go. Um, crop Rotation, Rush Rebirth. Choose a creature when it dies, you search for... Wow, that's really... And Grapple with the Past. Mill three, you get a creature or a land back. Noted. So what's this? Dark Blast target... I guess you can target mom with it, but it's going to cost you three. So that's going to be basically your entire turn to have your Dark Blast not work. Honestly, it's almost better to just discard it to the news. Control. Okay, so they are going to Dark Blast targeting Thalia. Um, So I am going to go ahead, give it pro black and then see really what if anything comes of that. And I don't mind just pressing six here. So we'll just let them take the rest of it and kind of see what else is happening here. So they're just going to discard their other dredger, which makes sense. I don't know what they're planning on doing with me. We are currently doing the stacks thing, which is uh, if you control your commander, you get a... Oh, sick. So I didn't know whether Loyal Apprentice here did the thing where you can only have one of the Thopters come from Loyal Apprentice, but no, you can actually just get a new Thopter every turn. So looks like I'm actually going to get to attack with three friends that um, are non-humans this time. Um, beginning of combat, swing for the fences go go gadget team and i get three spins now grand abolisher hell yeah let's go nothing on that one and palace jailer or sanctum prelate i'm gonna go with palace jail so we get to steal this become the monarch life is exciting god the monarch is a fucked up mechanic um but they're taking a lot of damage here so first strike then go down to 10 uh, i'm going to recruiter i honestly have no idea what I want. um i have two mana two is not so i can get oh remorseful cleric where is it so i'm going to remorseful cleric away their graveyard 
while they can't do much about draw a card go well that's pretty crappy sorry opponent okay and it looks like Winota's doing the thing good job to us against Gitrog monster all right so we are playing against the first sliver and they reveal Gigantha as a companion so our opponent's ultra tryharding I love it um we are on the draw which means I'm actually gonna keep this hand I've got the gemstone caverns which is really exciting and um so now I gotta exile a card. It's gonna be silence against the first sliver because I'm pretty sure. Like, is this just a combo? Or I'm sorry, is this just a combat deck? Like, am I wildin'? Um, enters a battlefield tapped. Add a man of any color in your commander's color identity. When it is spent to cast a creature spell that shares a creature type, you scry one. Okay, that means at the end of turn, I'm actually gonna cast this gamble. I want to go find. Oh my god, I can't cast gamble at end of turn. Jesus Christ, Andre, you play legacy. Um, untap. <laughs> <laughs> That's embarrassing. So, um, I am still going to, I think I just gamble for, I want mana and I want the mana to be able to, so do I just get like a Lotus Petal Legion? No, no, I want mana crypt. What am I doing? Yeah, I want mana crypt. So mana crypt on Legion War Boss will let me cast this now. And if I get to untap with all my cool stuff, I can also Winota after that. So where's my mana crypt here it is. I got rid of recruiter, which I already wasn't planning on casting. Sick. So let's start here. Uh, we'll yield to that, turn sideways, and then we just kind of go from like, let's see what our opponent's cooking. And then next turn, ideally, we actually get to attack with three non-humans and Winota on the table. So fingers crossed. I'll even have a fifth point of mana too, so I can like Sarah's and if all goes well, we are going to be cast this next turn. So let's see what our opponent it's gonna do with their second uh let's do that do we lose the flip uh and... yay we did not lose the flip let's go uh phyrexian revoker that'll be good if our opponent's gonna come at us with some kind of mana shenanigans later but i'll just be okay getting a basic lands so let's cast our friend red white colorless winota hit the table oh my god let's go we get to spin a bunch mentor is gonna hit one of our midgets here thalia's lancers or ranger captain i guess i'll get thalia's lancers um yes i would like to use the ability legendary cards i can get include i guess rags let's get rags okay yeah they're done they're off it sick so really quick turbo winota beats up on first sliver let's play one more before we stop so we got our third match vdh here we won the die roll we of course reveal our friend winota against yamji who something oh yomiji not yeah yomiji who bars the seven drop four four commander whenever a legendary permanent other than this thing is put into a graveyard from the battlefield return that card to its owner's hand and it's not just their stuff it's mine too opponent's being pleasant so i'll be nice too so let's see our hand um it's a bit slow we can do better than this i think this counts as better i don't particularly know what mono white is i assume there's some ridiculous combo where they rinse and use um a bunch of crazy effects right but i think a curve of ginger brute into spirit of labyrinth slash a braid into archon is probably pretty good so i'm gonna assume that's a thing so let's see what i can get away with as far as having decent draws right like a little bit of mana with ginger brute immediately turns on winota especially if i get something really nice like a uh, copy of mana crypt or something but honestly i'll take like a soul ring too for next turn right like i can draw soul ring play my second land immediately turn that into an archon of Maria. so that's not nothing but more importantly i really just want a spot which is super nice I Ganjo Castle, okay, lots of legendary things. There's mom, got it. Assignment understood. I want that. Okay, so now we do the untap. <gasps> Solitude, that's really good. Okay, okay, so I can Solitude mom and abrade the mana crypt. Um, I am gonna give them the chance to block though, because I don't really give a shit about this ginger brute. So let's see if they want to block with mom for some odd reason. Yeah, didn't think so. So we are going to exile the spirit. I'm gonna get rid of the spirit. I really don't think the mono white deck is, uh, you know, gonna be the biggest proponent of like draw card effects. So I don't really expect this um, Spirit of Labyrinth text to be that relevant. But what I am going to do is let them untap and then give them the chance to lose the flip before casting a break. Because either way, I'm going to abrade them. So I might as well give them the chance to take some additional damage. Ha ha ha! They actually... 
<laughs> Sick. Um, <laughs> Alright, so now we have Braid before they actually have the chance to use the mana. Okay, maybe they get to use the mana after all and I'm just wrong and bad. Is that the case? It is not. Alright, so opponent, you're gonna have two mana just like the rest of us normal human beings. And what happens here? Oswald Fiddlebender, that's a pretty good one. So here I would really just appreciate lands, that'd be great. Uh, Stepmom. Stepmom's not bad. Not great, but not bad. So let's make this unblockable and turn sideways. So I would still really like to have access to just more mana rocks would be super great. Soul Ring or Mana Crypt would be especially good. Um, We've got mismatched planes too. Okay, so they sorted my stepmom and they have Mana Vault. Not much I can do about that. If they want to transmute Mana Vault to something sweet, then so be it. Oh no, no, we're just getting dirty in the combat zone. All right, understood, respect. I'll take mana. Um, um, that is mana. I don't know that that is the specific mana I want to be using. No, I think I need to still. Like there is, but I think I can't cast Archon with that Lotus Pet. I think I have to give myself a chance to actually play Winota if I draw a land next turn. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm not gonna use the Lotus Petal, which also potentially means I just shouldn't have, I could have just left it in my hand, but I think I'm okay with this. There is a pretty high potential that I should have. What do we got here? Three, six mana, seven if they drew a land. Okay, so it is seven. So they have access to this thing and I can't cast Winota. Um, so I got to do something about this Strand of Magistrate. Otherwise, I'm not. Um, and that's opponents only too. So they can actually still cast their own commander. I just can't cast mine. So looks like what's going to happen here is I'm going to take two. I go to 35. I cry about it. And I'm really just kind of hoping to draw something sweet next turn. A removal spell for this would be cool, but I'd rather just draw a land. So let's see if we can get away with okay cool so it looks like i will be able to draw a land and get away with playing what i have so that at least is a good start um also it does put a dead stop to their attacking with oswald which is kind of cool because it's just you know a two three but now as soon as i can get rid of the strand of magistrate i'll be pretty happy to go ahead uh get to casting winota with two non-creatures on the table so if i can draw any of path to exile source to plowshares um palace jailer plays any of those things against the dranith magistrate turns my ability to cast winota back on so i'll be pretty happy to see okay are we just casting your commander for 100 mana are casting you for 100 mana okay and now they can also pot away this um mana vault into something that costs two so possibilities are this doesn't have reach does it no no keywords you know, the number of times I've had to read this thing for being a spirit is also borderline embarrassing. <laughs> so let's see if I can get a uh, Legion War Boss. That does not solve the Magistrate. Um, I mean, that's really it. It doesn't solve the Magistrate, but I don't necessarily. And I'm not going to be able to like block this thing really. So I might as well just like, so I'm going to go ahead and attack with my activate only as a sorcery. You got the blocks. So they take two, they go to 32. I'm potentially taking a bunch on the crack back here. And then we get to fight that fight, which to be fair, isn't necessarily the worst fight. I will be relatively glad to have that match straight off the table so I can go back to like doing. And we did keep a hand that didn't really accelerate too much, but you know, it's kind of what it is sometimes. All right, so they can pot away that mana vault, stop taking damage, get a two drop, which is pretty sweet. There's a lot of options. And honestly, I have no idea what their deck does. I also don't know why they used Igonjo Castle instead of one of their like 400 basic planes, but whatever. Fiddlebender gets, man, they have to have so, a Mind Stone, sure. Good enough. Valley's Lancers of their own. Okay, cool. So now to get to go, get something cool and legendary. I wonder what their cool legendary thing is. So this looks to be just really fair magic right now, right? Like this, this looks like we're doing just ultra fair stuff. Like I haven't really seen any of this, you know, too ridiculous out of what it like. There's just some mana. There's a removal spell. Dranith Magistrate is good, but annoying. Elish Norn. Bleh. I, um, <laughs> oh my God, that thing's about to, all right. So I suppose I'm, uh, no, I'm, I'm still not. Give me, I don't even know what I want at this point. Um, that's only medium bad. I don't know what I'm drawing into with this, but let's try it. What am I even hoping to draw for this candy? That was not it. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. I guess I will give myself a turn to, yeah, I guess I'll give myself a turn to draw something against Elish Norn. Cause like Elish Norn will make their stuff huge and I'll take an attack and I'll cry about it. I will still have access to my Archon of Ameria, which is still going to of course be a non-human and I'll still get to at least proc an attack off of Archon if I can do something about the Magistrate. But currently the Magistrate's locking me down pretty hard. So the combination of the Magistrate plus the Elish Norn, no, ah, plus Elish plus, 
Elish Norn, say that three times fast, might end up locking me out of this one. So let's uh, see if we can't draw a little bit. And what did we end up solituting? Was it a mom? Yeah, okay. And I think that's just one of those things that was just kind of always really unfortunate, right? Like we used an abrade on a mana crypt, um, which I still don't necessarily know that I would call wrong, right? Like we could have had a braid on a Dranith Magistrate, but that would have come at the cost of them having a mana crypt this entire. So like we could have just been, what is this? Oh, Catra's Monument. That's kind of cool. All right. So that does mean for our purposes though, that they will have access to Elish Norn mana. Okay. And they're going to pot into another three drop. So let's see what that three drop is. What's the three drop? Bantu's Monument. Oh! Ooh, that doesn't violate the color identity. No, you can just have these in because they don't actually have mana symbols, so you're allowed to play this. Okay, cool. That's a thing that, honestly, now that I know, I still don't particularly care, but it is good to know. So I assume we just attack with this, right? Oh no, we're attacking here too? Okay. Uh, yeah, whatever. No blocks, we take this. So what am I hoping to draw? Um, dead to this Elish one, two, three, five, six, and they can pod this into the four drop that makes two mana and taps to draw two cards. So yeah, all right, I'm off it. So we're gonna lose to the Elish Norn here and Dranith Magistrate, real good magic card. Uh, let's move on to the next game. So our opponent here, Alkaline Trio. I know that, is that a band? I think that's a band. It is a band name, look at me go. All right, yeah. So Alkaline Trio, it's a band. Uh, we actually got a reference. Hooray, job done. Uh, our opponent is playing Wart the Raid Mother. What are you, double spells? Uh, you come in, you make two 1-1 one, one goblins. Every red or green instant or sorcery has conspired. So yes, you double spells. Okay. Um, we are going to keep our seven card hand. It's got gemstone caverns. Against a deck that's focused on instants and sorceries, I don't expect Phyrexian Revoker to have much text. So I think I'm going to get rid of, and our opponent's the one who's on the plus. So let's see if our opening hand of what, Loyal Apprentice Rog Rack is pretty good? So give me a Mana Rock, I guess. Not the one that requires another land, you jerk. <laughs> I guess I did. Um, I'm never gonna get to play this. <laughs> that sucks. So cast our friends, cast our friend, be very sad about the Mox. Oh, you have haste. Be very sad about the Mox Diamond. And then I guess kind of go from there, right? So if we can draw Ramping Growth. Okay, so we're going to get a basic mountain here. And it looks like their mana is pretty much all set up. How much do you cost? Six? Yeah, you cost six. A Kiki Jiki. Can't really do much with that. Um, ugh, how dare you? You betrayed me. I guess I'll cry about it later. So I suppose I should be a little more specific in my requests next time, right? Because uh, Vernal Bloom, whenever a forest is tapped, its controller adds in it. Yikes. Okay, that's scary. An Iron Mirror is actually good enough to let me potentially cast Winota next turn if I draw like another land or something. So that's kind of cool, but I won't lie and say I'm not scared because they've got two, four, six, eight, nine mana here. That's so much. So yeah, I expect nothing. Okay, so they're gonna get to cast War. She's gonna come in with a couple of one ones. Life is very scary. They also can conspire a two drop spell or I guess a three drop land grain. So the second one isn't actually going to do anything, but it's still cool that this effect happens. Uh, <laughs> oh no, 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 duh. Never mind, never mind, never, duh. They still get to go look for lands. Um, Do I get to tap this immediately? If I don't have, if I get to tap this immediately, then I'm actually, I, I legitimately don't know if it would enter the battlefield, you can discard a little, if it would, it sounds like an instead. Yeah, I think I'm just going to swords this, lose to rules I don't know. <laughs> she can definitely come right back on the table because they're going to have eight mana, but at least we got that off right. So let's, uh, I guess attack for two and call this a day, All right? All right. Or three, duh. That's a 2-1, not a 1-1. One, one. The thop, there's that she makes her one. Honestly, this is a sweet looking picture too. I'm a pretty big fan of what's happening. So they're going to tap 8 mana. Cage Sun, okay. So now all of their green stuff is going to tap for 100. These are going to be 2-2s. Two uh, 3 mana, 4 mana potentially. Okay, make that 7 mod. So they can really do anything they want. Like 7 mana is so much. What are we doing with our 7? Reach of Branches? What do you do? You get a 2-5. Whenever a forest enters a battlefield, you can get this thing back from graveyard to hand. Got it. Okay. Um, And it's a tree 
invoke, so no reach? Oh, it is reach of branches, but it doesn't actually give reach. That's hilarious. All right, so if they want to attack with these, I guess I'm just going to take it. Okay, I don't really care about that. Um, You know what? I'm never going to get use out of this, so I'm going to learn today. Can I tap you for mana? I legitimately have no idea whether I... Nope, okay. <laughs> okay. I was gonna learn something new today. Um, so things I can do, I can even mind sensor in response to something they cast, which is probably gonna be the best use I have really this next turn. So I'm gonna give myself the chance. To I can also path to exile my own creature to go and get a land for Winota. So that is also on the table, but let's see what they cast first to see what the better option is. If this is like a freaking tooth and nail, I'm gonna be happy to have this save in mind sensor. Okay, her, I can't, really do anything about so i can right now have to exile her get her off the table and see if i am able to stop a conspired spell but i think enacting my own plan is probably a little better yeah three six okay so we're just like getting a shit ton of that is still really obnoxious and honestly i might just lose in combat but i am at least able to do stuff so let's i'm probably dead if i'm completely honest yeah like not getting this other not really helping out but what do i want to get rid of if i path i think i'm gonna get rid of rock rack so i'm going to lock with it since i'm already going to be getting rid of it might as well not take the damage um and then path to exile myself yes please i will take it planes and with the iron mirror that'll give me enough mana to have access to so that's kind of cool um things that are less cool include the fact that i cast you so i'm only going to get two triggers which might not be enough to contend with this board but i'm going to give myself the chance to play as much magic as possible so let's try so let's auto yield here we get a village bell ringer to untap everything that's kind of cool okay and a zealous conscripts does that do anything immediately? I believe the answer is no. I want to gain control and untap. I think I want to gain control of my own planes and untap it so I can cast mom. Yeah. All right. So now they can go ahead and block nothing that's not indestructible already. So so that part's kind of irrelevant. Um. But what is relevant is that I can cast mom. If I get to untap with mom in play and all of this cool stuff right, I actually have a pretty sweet chance to infinite them. Because the way that this is going to end up working here is that I've got Kikijiki already in hand and Village Bell Ringer on the table. So if I actually get to use um, that combo and all I need is one land to do it, then they can just die to tokens. So I'm going to you know cross my fingers here so hopefully they don't destroy my iron mirror that would be kind of a disaster and i still need to draw another land to make that combo happen but it's totally possible also we got to learn a little about mox diamond so regrowth is gonna be able to get both of their land cards back so they have approximately a million of these three sixes coming in um so i'm just gonna go ahead and press six while they make some ungodly or three sixes and what we're hoping for here it just doesn't matter at all because I would really like, oh, actually they didn't cast a 3-6 first. That's surprising. I think we should have cast a 3-6 first if they were going to. Oh no, Rampant Growth is still on the stack. Okay. Oh, this thing's an instant. That's cool. Okay. Okay. Oh wait, is that infinite 3 sixes? No, it's not infinite because they don't have it. It's just a lot of 3 sixes. Okay. That is still really sweet though. Like they get to make 3 sixes, tap the three sixes that are already in play to conspire three sixes and every time a force comes into play off of like one of these rampant growth effects they'll just have access to more of the three sixes so this is still pretty sweet give me a land um <laughs> unfortunate uh one two three four i'm just confirming real quick i don't have a fifth mana nope dang it um deck betrayal all right so we're gonna get to make a thopter and we are still gonna get to attack and make a shit ton of triggers for winota so that's still not nothing uh you can attack you can attack you can attack i don't want you to attack so we're gonna get to spin three times still sanctum prelate i mean is it too late to name sanctum prelate on five <laughs> like a little late for that right um i guess i'm still gonna do it though so that shuts off the reach of branches which is hilarious but <laughs> dranith magistrate is cool in case i can get warped off the table and if this is like a palace jailer to get ward off the table then we're actually recruiter of the guard that is a palace jailer uh use recruiter's ability yes 
do I have something better than a palace jailer? Because they have like a shit ton of three sixes, right? So I'm not actually going to get to get and keep the monarch. It's going to be one of those, you know, fight back monarch versus monarch things. Um, so what else do I have? I have Rabble Master, Grand Abolisher, Hope, Imperial Recruiter, which I don't think is better. Mog Catcher, I already have Kiki Jiki. Uh, Remorseful Cleric, Sarah Ascendant is pretty big game. Um, I do like the idea of Sarah Ascendant. I Solitude, I can't cast Solitude, at least not without pitching a card, which why? So I guess I actually am going to grab the Palace Jailer, especially since that gives me the chance to just, you know, draw land class Kikiji. So that might actually just be something that plays here. So all of my humans are indestructible, so I don't need to use mom for anything. That's kind of cool. Uh, so they're just going to take their one, go down to 31. That's whatever. And I'm going to cast this now. And this is going to get and keep wart off the table, which is cool. Um, because Drannith Magistrate means that they can't cast War on the way back. Uh, they... Oh no, they get it... Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they're gonna get it back when, uh, they're the Monarch, right? Oh no, 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 no. They just actually just chose to put her in the Command Zone? Oh, well, that was a mistake unless they can get rid of this. Okay. Uh, we're done here. All right, give me a land for the, uh, draw, please. Hey, we got a land, so we can cast Kikiji. Because we've got three red sources. I've got Iron Mirror and this and this. So, if I get to untap, um... Reach of Branches can't be cast because of the Sanctum Prelate that's on X is 5, so we might actually be gaming. So they get to attack with a shit ton of 3 sixes. don't particularly care about those. They have 7 of them, so I can block here, block here, make that 6 of them, I take 18 and go to 28. Oh, that's got six toughness. There was no reason to double block. I could have just blocked one of each and then taken less. So they're going to become the monarch a million times. That's whatever. Um, and they are going to get the draw a card, which is honestly kind of obnoxious. But we're also going to get the monarch on the way back. Let's... And that's all assuming that they don't just scoop on a spot to Kiki Jiki, which, uh, what is nine minutes? Is this tooth and nail? Don't be too super sweet, but I think I like the idea of keeping forts off the table, so I don't know what you're casting, opponent. Land Grant, okay. Um, and they're only casting one copy of Land Grant, which is kind of whatever. So they have access to nothing. End of turn. Sick. Uh, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Let's combo, let's combo. Red mana C -c -c combos all right opponent please pack it up we want to end this video on a really good sweet infinite combo note although i won't even i won't actually make fun of the opponent because like their deck realistically is actually pretty cool um we we had to okay they scooped sick so i was gonna type out infinite combo in case they uh didn't scoop to it but they did so yeah we get to end that on a really sick so let's head back to the deck list and then um yeah have a little bit of review i guess all right, so now that we have gone through our commander venture for the day, honestly, I kind of liked a lot of what happened here, right? Like we got to do some really high powered stuff and our opponents, we fought against a bunch of different decks today too. So we did end up facing the same Gitrog monster opponent twice, but in that very first one, like I said, they just like scooped on the spot to a turn one Magus of the Moon. So that doesn't really count as a game i guess I'm, I'm not gonna count that one so that's not going in the video nothing really happened there but we won three out of the four real games we played today so like that's really exciting right we got to discover some things about our list that we would improve given the one vs um, one versus one environment so i was really glad to see that right like we drew the spectator seating played it and it was terrible because it came into play tapped and we, you know, discovered that by playing because all I did was just copy paste the list, right? But doing that led us to understand more things about the deck as, you know, one is wont to do when you're actually playing Magic, right? You learn from your experiences. And a few cards came up that were really sweet. And honestly, we got to use like a lot of sweet stuff to turn off a lot of what our opponents were doing. And one of the things that I did notice, though, is that we did find some decks that were ultra tryharding, but we only played four matches, so it's, I guess, to be expected. But we didn't come across a lot of the decks that I expected to come across. Like, we did come across, like, a first sliver. We came across a, um, 
like a mono white stack stack we came across Gitrog monster so there is some top tier stuff happening there but we didn't face any of like the Thassa's Oracle pile as I expected to fight down. We didn't fight anything with like Yuriko in it. Um, so there's still like a decent amount of the top tier that we really should expect to fight that we didn't fight today. So some cards that we could have drawn and simply didn't come up uh, could have mattered. Like we didn't fight any counterspell matchups. So a card like Deflecting Swat didn't really do anything. We didn't fight anything playing Wrath of God effects. So like Flawless Maneuver didn't really come in or half text or anything like that. But we did get to just put a shit ton of power and toughness on the table. Our removal spells were pretty good. Um, we didn't find any matchups in which like Gideon would have helped at all. But we did end up like, you know, still finding opportunities to figure out what cards were important in given matchups, how we could use any of our various tutoring effects or just like Minota finding key pieces off the top of the deck to make victories possible, right? Like we had to maneuver around a crap ton of power and toughness to beat our tree folk opponent because like that warped the raid mother deck. That thing was sick. Um, you know, you just got to have like a mega shit ton of mana. They're forced tapped for three a piece. And that, uh, what is it called? Reach of Branches, the five mana thing that made three sixes. That card was actually insane. Like they had so much power and toughness on the table. And honestly, I think the only way we were going to win that was going to be by infiniting them. And luckily we actually got to do that. But that was a really close thing, right? Like they could have just, you know, what if they, instead of playing Reach of Branches, played like, I don't know, Lava Ball Trap or some craziness that wiped our lands and our board at the same time, or, you know, just like any really crazy spicy shenanigans they could have been playing. Um, but we got to do a lot of cool stuff. I was, I had a lot of fun with this. I fully expect to play a few more rounds of this before the Mana Traders rounds start on the next week because that's when it's going to be relevant i think they start on the 8th or the 9th and go up through like the 19th or some such i don't i don't remember but whatever later this month after mother's day but that's going to be our video for today let me know what changes you would make to this winota list or if you're playing winota you know maybe put your deck list in the comments i'm willing to check things out learn more about edh as it comes up because like i said i'm not ultra familiar with this format anyway so the more i can learn from y'all the better also let me know what other high powered format are decks you're playing too because i just don't know all of what's out there so let me know what's out there maybe i can learn something from y'all instead of y'all learning something from me today and that'll be a really exciting time i'm looking forward to it also anybody who hasn't already done so join the discord lots of positivity and hype in there but that's gonna be today's video. If you like what you're watching, make sure to click like on the video, sub to the channel if you haven't already done so, and I'll see y'all on the next one.